All right, that's that. Now we've got to do the two cylinders here and here. These are a little tricky because those cylinders are right in the middle of these four knobs. If you shine a bright light on your Lego, you can actually see the structure from the front side when there's a light behind it. To find the exact middle between these four circles, what we need to do is create a sketch and we're gonna use something called a construction line. Now what construction lines are, are markings on your sketch plane that don't affect extrusions. So you can't extrude a construction line. They're just there to line things up for you and show you where things are. So to get a construction line, we first click on the line tool or any shape really. And we come over here and we hit the construction. And now we can just place them. And now notice how, because I'm sketching on a plane that has that hole in it, that circle in it, I can find the center of the circle by seeing that circle there. I click here and then come down to this center and click there. Um, notice how it wants to draw a second line, like straight from there. Well, I don't want that. So one way to get out of that is the escape button. The other way is just to hit the check mark and say, okay, I'm done with that line. And then go to this center and come down to this center. Notice when we're drawing construction lines that it makes them dashed lines. That tells us that we can't use these for extrusions. They're just there. And the other cylinder is going to be right on this one and this one to there. So now using those constructions, I'm going to hit this little green check mark, say I'm done doing that. I'm going to escape out of my line tool. And I'm going to turn construction lines off. If you forget to do this, everything you draw from this point will be dashed lines and you can't extrude them. So make sure you get your construction lines turned off. You can always switch them by highlighting, but avoiding that's a good thing. Now I'm going to draw those cylinders. There's actually two cylinders. There's one for the inside radius and then one for the outside. The inside radius has a radius of five millimeters, the same as the nubs. And the outside is 6.6. .6. So I'm going to draw two circles on each one. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say that's five millimeters, enter. And I'm going to go here and 6.6. .6. Now you'll notice that drew them both as black because I attached them, the center to that X line, which is attached to circles that have a definitive ID to them, like a location to them. So everything's locked in place now. And then here I'm going to do the same thing, five. And I could have done a repeat pattern here, but with only two, it's not really worth the extra time of going through the dialog boxes. Now I just need to extrude these. So I'm going to take these two shapes here and I'm going to extrude them out. So I'm going to push E for extrude. I'm going to rotate it so I can see which direction it's going. You don't have to do that. It just makes life easier, I think. I'm going to highlight both of those and I'm going to pull them out. You can see I just extruded them and now I have those cylinders. But the problem, whoa, the problem is it's hard to tell how far to pull them out. So there's two things you can do. You can figure out with math how long, how high this wall is and tell it to go that high. But a better way of doing it is over here in the extrude menu. Notice that it says start profile plane. So that's the, where I was sketching. So I'm starting on my sketching plane. Um, and then I'm going to say the direction, I want one direction, so I want to go one-sided. Um, the distance, this is where we're going to do the extent menu here to ask you how far you want to do it. Distance means I'm going to tell you a number or I'm going to move it to get a certain number, right? So that, that's that I'm going to tell you what that number is. Another option here is say to go to an object, which means it's going to extend the extrusion until it's even with another object. And this object I want to be even with is right here. It asks me what object you want to be even with. I'm going to click the bottom of the brick. And notice it just extruded perfectly to the bottom. Now the reason this is a better way to go here is if later on I come back and edit things and I change the height of this brick, they, the inside cylinders will follow that height because they're defined to be as high as the outside. Whereas if I were to put a number in there like uh, I don't know, 11 or whatever that number would be, I'd have to go back and change that, figure out what that new number would be and put the new number in to make them go bigger if I change this height. Um, so it's kind of nice to have things tethered to each other. So when you change one, it changes everything else. Okay, so far so good. 
Now we need to add what's called webbing. Well, I'm going to click OK here to finish the extrusion. It'll take a second. Now we need to add the webbing. What webbing is, it's these little walls of plastic that help reinforce everything. If I left it like this, these inside two cylinders over time would snap off easily and these walls would flex and bow a bunch and we wouldn't have a very strong connection between Legos. So we're going to do some webbing. Now here's the problem. If you notice those little walls in there between the cylinders that go across, those are called webbing but they don't actually go all the way to the bottom of the Lego. They start two millimeters below the bottom and then go all the way down. So the way we do webbing is actually pretty straightforward. First of all, we need to be able to start our drawing. So if I click right here, let's just do one. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, basically to do some webbing, you draw a line. So I'm gonna do a sketch. I'm gonna do it on this surface. Oops, let me move it. And I'm just going to draw a quick line. I'm not going to line it up or anything because I don't. this is just a practice one. I'm going to draw it to here. And then I'm going to say, yep, that's good. And then I'm going to go here to here. I'm going to say the green. Say, yep, that's good. And I'm going to go from here to here. Notice I'm not even doing the sketch all the way across. I can if I want to. Though. Watch this. I'm going to do this one all the way across. I'm not lining them up either because I'm just showing you quickly how to get this done. So now it's just perfect, right? I'm going to say, okay, that one's done. I'm going to zoom back out. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say create and whoops, nope, I got to finish the sketch first, sorry. So the webbing tool is actually in this solid menu. So I'm going to go like this, you can see, and you can see the sketch I did of these are all on the surface here of the bottom. And I'm going to just say create, I don't see it, there it is, web. And it's going to ask me, hey, what things do you want to create the web with? So I'm going to say this one, and see if I can grab that one. It doesn't want to grab it. I'm going to move it around. I'm going to rotate a little bit so I can grab it a little better. It's not showing me any love. I'm having a hard time grabbing them. Well, I should be able to grab all four. Yeah, for whatever, it's just, it's just acting weird right now. Let me do this. Let me see if I can hide the body real quick. Now, so normally it lets me grab all four, um, but you can, uh, you can see what's happening anyway. So let me turn the body back on. So whenever I create a web, it takes the line I have and it creates it as an outside boundary and then fills in everywhere down towards your object. Now this is problematic because look how high it is. We don't want webbing. We want the webbing to start down here somewhere, not way up here. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. Um, and I'm gonna head back to home. And I'm actually gonna delete the sketch I just did. Down there. And then I'm gonna redo it. Now here's how to, here's how to get it in the right place. So we want those lines that we sketched to be two millimeters below this surface. So I'm gonna do what's called an offset plane. So I'm gonna go here to construction, whoops, and I'm gonna come down here to offset plane and click on it. The first thing it asks me is, hey, what do you wanna offset from? So where's your starting plane? So I'm gonna say the, ba the base is my starting plane. And now watch what it'll let me do. Notice this yellow, orangey yellow, that's my drawing plane. I can do make my drawing plane above the bottom of the brick or down into the brick, and that's what I want. I want to draw those webbing lines two millimeters below the surface. So I'm going to say, okay, that looks great. And now I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to redraw those uh, webs. But this time I'm going to position them really carefully. So I'm going to say, I'm going to do a sketch, and then I'm going to tell it, I'm going to sketch that plane that I just created. So notice there's that yellow plane. Now it's gray. I want that one. And 
I can't actually grab. So when I go here to grab onto center, I can't do that because these circles don't exist on my center, right? So you can see where my plane comes through. See where the graph paper goes through the, the wall? This circle isn't on that plane, so I need to project it first. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click back to the bottom. And I'm going to go here to create and project. And I'm going to say, whoops, project. And I'm going to say I want to project that circle, that circle, because that'll let me line those up. And I want to go out to this wall, so I'm going to select all of that. And I'm going to say project that and click OK. Now you can see on my drawing or on my sketch plane it has all that structure drawn in for me and right now this is all really confusing to look with the body in there so again I'm going to go over here to the Lego body I'm going to just hide it so now all I have is my sketch plane and then I'm going to click the line tool And notice how I went to heat to the center. I didn't click, but then I just rolled away from the center and it kept me lined up with the center. So then when I do click, I know I'm right in front of that center. And then I'm just going to click right on that edge. And the X tells me I'm on that edge. And we learned before, right, that we didn't really need to um, go right to the edge, but I'm going to because it's just easy to do that way. Whoops, so that was terrible. I'm going to control Z until I'm gone with that. Yep, and then I'm going to redraw it. Again, I'm going to visit the center. That'll help. That'll let me pull out and know exactly right where to put it. Visit the center and then go up here, line it up, and right there. So now we have our webbings drawn. We can turn the Lego back on and finish sketch. And now our sketches are finished and ready to rock and roll. So we're going to do create web and we're going to click on that one. And it's only for whatever you're going to let me do one at a time. Now I want my webbing to be 0.8 millimeters wide. And notice I had my thickness as symmetric. The reason I've marked as symmetric is that I marked the center of where the web's supposed to go. So I want it to go above and below that or left and right of it, however you look at it. And I need to say how much left and right I go. So I need to cut my thickness in half. So it's going to go 0.4 one way, 0.4 the other way. Then I'm going to click OK. And apparently we can only create one web at a time. Oh, wait, my. Uh oh. Control Z to undo what I just did. I don't know why I can't grab the webbing. I've been doing it all morning. It has been a problem. I'm going to start by holding down the shift button and pre-selecting all four of those and then going and doing a create web tool. All right, so that's that worked that time. I didn't do that before, but now I had to. And now it's creating a webbing. So the first thing I did is I selected them all before I did web and then it allowed me to use all four. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK. And notice how it automatically just built that webbing in. It shot it all the way down to both sides and everything. So pretty cool feature. All right, so one last thing we need. And this one's just time consuming to build. I'll show you to build the first one and then let you kind of go from there. Inside here are these little friction, these little bumps of plastic that create friction and make a really tight fit between the nubs of the, the Lego beneath. And there's one, there's like two in every corner and then one across every side. Let's model those really fast. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to say where we're going to have our plane. So I'm going to actually sketch these on the bottom plane of the Lego and then just extrude them all the way down to the um, plastic. So let's create a sketch plane right there. And to line these up perfectly, what I noticed is that there is one in line with um, the like in line in the center of this circle there's one right there on the edge and the center of this one so we need to find the centers of the circles so I'm gonna take this and say project well first of all if I grab this see how I can't find 
if I find the center of a circle, it gives me a, a, a circle that I, um, a blue circle there. This is a blue square. That means that I'm on like the center of a grid, one of these grids, not the center of the circle. Although in this case, they happen to be the same, but let's be careful about it. So in order to find the circle, I need to project that circle onto my drawing plane. So I'm going to grab that circle, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And I'm going to say, okay, project those. Now you can see it just projected those circles up onto my drawing plane. So now I can find them. And I'm also going to, you know what, I'm going to do another projection because I don't want to have that. Let's see, project. Project. I'm going to project that line, that line, that line, and that line, but not that. And I click OK. And now I'm going to hide the Lego because it's really getting in the way and being confusing for me. Um, that's weird that it didn't draw those two lines, but that, I think they'll, I think they're in there. All right, so let's do our construction line. So we're going to do a construction line from the center of this circle out to this edge. From the center of this circle out to this edge. Center out. And we're just going to keep repeating that. And... Okay, there it went. Center out to that edge. Center out to that edge. Center to there. Nice. Whoops, didn't pick it up. Here to there. Here to there. All right, so that's the location. I'm gonna hit escape. That's the location of all the, where the little squares of plastic are. And each little rib of plastic is going to be 0.3 square. So 0.3 on either side. So what I'm going to do to draw those is I'm going to grab actually the rectangle tool and I'm going to use a new rectangle option. So we've been using a two point tool, but this marks the center of that little square of plastic. So I'm going to grab the center rectangle, click it right here and then drag it out. And I want this, this width on the bottom here that goes into the wall, I want it to be a 0.6, so twice the width I want. And then this other one, whoops. And now I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna say 0.3 and hit enter. What that did is that just drew a rectangle. Oh, it's a construction rectangle, I gotta fix that. Um, it drew a rectangle that was 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, there's a little square on this side. Now, because it's a center rectangle, it drew a rectangle on the other side, but that doesn't really matter because it's in the wall. So I just need to make sure I get the 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 on this side. So when you do mess up and you make this a construction rectangle instead of a regular rectangle, what you do is you just click, hold shift, and click on all four sides of it, and then just unclick the, the construction part. Now I've drawn that one. I'm going to go ahead and draw the exact same thing for all these other construction lines. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to do a center point rectangle. Click. Drag. Oh, I noticed it's construction. So I'm going to turn the construction off. Awesome. And that side should be 0.6. So that's good. And then tab 0.3. And that's good. And I'm going to go to the next one here. Center point rectangle. I'm going to click, and that side should be 0.6, the other side should be 0.3, and that's good. I'm just going to move around my drawing doing the same thing on each one. Oops, didn't use a center point rectangle. Here, center point rectangle, that should be the 0.6, that should be the 0.3, enter center point rectangle that should be the point three that's the point six enter and now let's go down center point rectangle 
that should be the 0.6 and that should be the 0.3 center point rectangle that should be the point six that should be the point three there that is and then I just think I have three more to go center point boom that's the point three that's the point six and then one more or two more oops did not choose center point center point rectangle <laughs> this one and this one is a point six point three and enter and I've got one more to go I think this is the point three and the point six Alright, I'm going to zoom out, make sure I have them all. Yep, they're all in there. So I'm going to turn the Lego back on because I want to be able to see it. And now I'm going to extrude these. So I'm going to hit extrude. And it's going to ask me what profiles do I want to extrude. Now this is where things get a little tricky to, to highlight them. So what I want to extrude is just that rectangle right there on the inside of the box. The extra rectangle I built on the outside, like that's on the edge no i just extra click so i just click again and i i don't have to worry about that nothing else is messed up and i just boop and then i'm going to extrude and this time i'm not going to give it a distance i'm going to say to the object and it's going to ask me what object you want to extrude to i want to extrude to the bottom so now they're all extruded down to even with that bottom, you can see all those little pieces in there. And I'm going to click OK. It's going to create all that, get rid of all those extra drawings, and then I'm going to go back to home. The bottom inside is complete. There's one last thing we need to do. Notice on your Legos that the edges and the corners are all super sharp. Like they go to right to a 90 degrees. Boom. But if you feel the nubs, the nubs aren't the same way. They've got a tiny bit of round over. And what that lets you do is if they were perfectly like 90 degrees, it would be really hard to line them up with the next brick and get them to go together. But by giving us a little bit of round over, it gives them a little play to kind of wedge in there in the next brick. So we need to recreate that as well. And in Fusion, that's called Fillet. So we're going to go to Modified Screen here and come down to Fillet, which is just a round over feature. It's going to ask us, hey, select the things you want to round over. So I want to round over that, 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 and that. And then it's going to ask me how much round over do you want. So if I do a lot of, I can just drag this arrow too. I can do a lot of round over, right? Or I can do very no round over. But the one we want is 0.1 millimeter. Just a, just a, uh, a hair around, or just a tiny amount. And we're going to click OK. And that is our Lego brick. You can see as we zoom in, see how it's just nicely rounded over here? Zoom back out. And save. We are done. So every time you press save, it's going to do, it's going to be like a, it's going to allow you to save a name to it so you can know where in your design it is. All right, that's it. Oh my gosh, that was so long. Good job on the Lego brick. They get easier because you just are going to know how to do more things in your own without having to go through every step with me. Um, great job today. If you, if you need anything, make sure you touch base with me in class or during office hours. Thanks, everybody. Bye.